Hey, I'm Stu from Wii Video, and today I'm going to show you how to use motion graphics in Wii Video. Let's get started. We'll create a new project and start by exploring the awesome new textiles in Wii Video. We'll drag the ones we want to use down to the text one track on the timeline. For this project, I'm going to use a few of my favorites, tropical, rainbow, neon, retro, and transparent. You can also add backgrounds if you'd like. We'll search the stock media library and drag the backgrounds we like down to the video one track below our text. If you plan to export your project as a video and want to add music, it's best to do that early on so you can match the timing and style of your edits to the music. If you're planning to export your project as a GIF, there's no need to add music. I'll add music to demo that for this tutorial. The beat of this song repeats every four to eight seconds, so it works to have the text change every eight seconds. Okay, so this part's really fun. We're gonna animate our text. There are a few tools you can use to animate text, and the possibilities are endless. So I'm really excited to see what you all come up with. One way we can animate text is by adding transitions. We'll add a swap transition to the beginning of this text. With the swap transition, we get this cool effect where the text flies into our screen. Another way we can animate text is using the animation tool. Double click on text in the timeline to open the text editor. We'll start by editing our text. One of my New Year's resolutions is to express myself creatively, so I'll make this say creativity. When you're editing static text, you'll see the option to add animation. To create an animation, you're gonna set the position and size of your text at the start and end of the clip. We'll start with something simple and just increase the scale of the text at the end of our clip. Now our text starts at a scale of one and doubles in size. We can also add a transition to the end of our text. I'll just trim this other text box slightly so I can attach the transition just to this first bit of text. If we wanna make this a phrase or add more text, we can add another text track. And then I'll just drag a simple static text down to this other text track. I'll make this say explore creativity and adjust the size to nestle this new text in there. You can change the color if you want. I'll make this gray so it's a little more subtle. And then I'll animate this text too so it moves with the other text. And I'll add a crossfade transition and trim it slightly so it starts to appear once the other text has landed. So now we get this nice animation where the text flies in with the swap transition and then appears to get closer to us because of the animation and then flies out because of the transition. Let's move over to the rainbow text and see some other cool things we can do. We'll start by copying and pasting the small text over from our previous animation. We'll click reset to remove the animation from this new clip. Then we'll edit the rainbow text. You can turn on grid to help you center text. Just remember to turn off grid when you're done. Now let's say I wanted to have my text fly into the page. I can create a split on each text box. And then I'll open up the text and add an animation. And I'll drag the text off screen for the start position. I want the text to fly in horizontally, so I'll just make sure the Y coordinates are the same on the start and end position. I'll repeat this process with the other text block, and then we get this really cool fly in effect. Let's move over to the neon text. To make this more realistic, it could be cool to make it flicker like a light. To do this, we'll create a split, and then we'll zoom in on the timeline, and we'll just create a tiny little bit of space so that it looks like the light is flickering. You could even change the color of the text so it looks like the light changes color when it flickers. You could also make it look like the light gets brighter. And to do this, we'll just create two splits and then we'll just slightly increase the size of the middle text box. And here's what we get. Next up is the transparent text. There's some really cool effects you can do with this. Let's check it out. So you can expand the transparent text to fill the screen horizontally. And if you want it to fill the screen vertically, you can open up the text editor, create a character, 
press enter a couple times to create some space, press enter after your word a couple times, and then leave another character. And then we'll just adjust the position so that our word is in the middle of the screen. We can edit the text, we can edit the font, and then we're going to choose a fun background to put behind the transparent text. At this point, the border is going to be slightly transparent, so you'll still see the background um, underneath the border. If we want the border to be completely opaque, we can just change the color to white or black or another color. And now we'll see our background just through the text. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is this really cool trick, which is how to animate each letter independently. So to do this, I'm going to create a few more tracks. I'm going to drag the retro text down to the first open track. I'm going to increase the size of the text to match the text below it. And then I'm going to edit the text to read just the first letter of the word. Then I'll adjust the position so it matches the text below. And then I'm just going to copy and paste the J. I'll drag the new text box to the track above the J and change it to the next letter in the word and just drag that so that it matches and then I'll just repeat that process to create the last letter. I'm just going to adjust this so the J is on the top layer and the Y is on the bottom layer so that the letters overlap the way that I want. And now I can delete the original text box that said joy. So now I can use color, transitions, and animation to animate each letter independently. For example, let's say I wanted to make it look like the letters of this word were being played like an instrument. For each letter, I'll need to create two animations. One where it looks like the letter is being pressed down, and one where it's popping back to its original position. So I'll split the text box three times and I'll open the first section I want to animate and I'll change the end position to be slightly smaller to look like the letter's being pressed down. And then I'll open the next section and I'll set the start position to match the end position from the previous clip so the animation continues and it looks like the letter's popping back out. I can also change the color of the last two sections of this text box that I've isolated so it looks like the letter gets pushed down and then it changes color as a result. So that's basically it. Now I would just repeat this process with the other letters in the word and time the movements with the music to make it look like the letters are being played like an instrument. Another cool thing we could do is have the letters float around the page. We could even have them bounce off the walls and bounce off each other, sort of like a video game. So I'm going to have this J bounce off the wall and then bounce off of the O. So to do this, I'm going to split the J twice, one where I want to start the animation moving towards the wall and one where I want to stop the animation. Then I'm going to animate that section and set the end position nestled right up against the wall. Now I'm going to create another animation of the J bouncing off the wall. So I'll create another split where I want the next animation to end. So now I'll animate this next section, and I want the movement of the J to continue where the last animation left off. So I'll set the start position to be the same as the end position from the previous animation, and then I'll set the end point to where I want the J to move to next. Now I want the J and the O to bump into each other and redirect. So I'm going to split the O at the same place where I made my last split on the J, so their end positions match. And then I'll split the O to start the animation at the same point where the J started moving. So then I'll just animate the O so the end position bumps right up against the J. So then I would just repeat this process to have the J and the O move in opposite directions. And you could even have the color change when they bump into each other. So that's it. Now you have a lot of tools under your belt and we can't wait to see what you create. Happy creating.